Git, a distributed source control repository. I try to picture clusters of information as they move through the file system. Were the commit messages like history books? I kept dreaming of a repository I thought I'd never see. And then, one day, get real. You're watching Get Real, and this is level five, where we're going to be talking about remote branches and tags. So in level three, Olivier taught you about local branches. But what about remote branches? There's going to be times where you have a branch, let's say an admin branch, and you want other people to be able to work on it. You're going to need to be able to push that branch remotely so other people can pull it down and work on it and continue working on it until it's ready to merge back into master. Also, it's just a good practice. If you're working on a branch that's going to last longer than a day, you might want to back it up. And you can back it up, of course, by making it a remote branch and pushing it to GitHub. In our case, we want to start working on a shopping cart. So we create a shopping cart branch. And then to push it to GitHub, we simply run git push origin shopping cart. So that is going to link the local branch to the remote branch and start tracking it. Then maybe we'll get some work done on the branch, we'll add the cart, we'll do a commit, and then when we do push, because it is a tracking branch, it knows to push the local shopping cart branch to the remote shopping cart branch. If we jump back over to GitHub now and click that button right there, we're going to see a list of all the branches, or all the remote branches right here. We can click on shopping cart, and we can see the last commit of the shopping cart branch and all the files. So we created a branch, we push it up to GitHub, and then maybe I tell my coworker, hey Jane, I started the remote branch for shopping cart stuff. If you want to work on it, go ahead and grab it. So what do things look like from Jane's perspective? Well, the next time she does a poll, it's going to show her in the output that we have a new remote branch called shopping cart. If she does git branch, she's not going to see it as a local branch yet. But if she does git branch dash r, she's going to be able to see all the remote branches. She's going to run git checkout shopping cart to start working on the branch, and it's automatically set up as a tracking remote branch. So from here, she can make her changes, and when she's done, she can git push to that remote branch. One of the most useful commands for working with remote branches is the git remote show command. And so then origin, of course, is our remote name. So this is going to show us all of our remote branches and whether they're tracked or not. It'll show us all the local branches and which remote branches they merge with. And lastly, it'll show us all the local branches configured for when we do a git push. The cool part about this is it even goes out to the server and checks to see if any of our local branches are out of date, in which case here we can see that our shopping cart is out of date. Remote branches, just like local branches, don't last forever. You might get done with a feature. To delete the remote branch, you're going to run git push origin, colon, and then the branch name. This is only going to delete the remote branch, though. You're still going to have a local branch for shopping cart. So we're going to also want to delete that. So we run git branch dash d shopping cart. Uh-oh, and it's not letting us delete that branch. It says that there's some commits that we haven't merged anywhere. That's kind of a cool feature of git. If you try to delete a branch and there's commits that haven't been merged anywhere, well, it's going to say, hey, you're, you're deleting changes that you might want. So it gives you a warning. But if you really do want to delete the branch, you can just do capital D, and it will delete it. So Jane is the one that deleted the remote commit. But Greg is the one that created it in the first place. So what happens when he tries to push to that remote that doesn't exist anymore? Well, let's take a look. So Greg is working on that branch. He commits something. Then he tries to do a push. Well, nothing happens. Because the remote doesn't exist, locally, it's just a remote branch. To figure out what's going on, Greg might run git remote show origin. Here he's going to see that, oh, look, that shopping cart branch is stale. Somebody deleted it. OK. To remove that reference, he's going to want to run git remote prune origin, just as it says, and it will clean up all the old stale branches. This command is something you probably want to run every once in a while if you're on a large project that has a lot of remote branches that get deleted at some point. It's going to remove all of those stale references. Let's say one of our remote branches is a Heroku staging server. We called it Heroku staging. The thing about Heroku is that it only deploys the branch which is named master. 
Right. So if we have, let's say, a staging branch, and we do a git push Heroku staging staging, well, it's going to try to push a remote branch called staging, and nothing's going to get deployed. Because as I mentioned a minute ago, Heroku only looks for the master branch. It only deploys from the master branch. In this case, we would run git push Heroku staging staging master. What that's going to do is link up our local staging branch to the remote Heroku master branch. So when we push to it, it's going to push from staging to master and deploy. So now that we've talked about remote branches, we're going to talk a little bit about tags before we go on to the challenges. Tags are basically a reference to a specific commit. It's a good way to sort of jump back to that state of what the code was in at any given time. A lot of people use it for release versioning, right? So when we have our code in a good state, we might tag it version 0.1, right? So to list out all the tags, we can just do git tags to check out that tag and go back to what the code looked like when we tagged it. We do git checkout and then the tag name. To add a new tag, we can simply do git tag a, add the tag name, and then give a tag description. And lastly, to push our tags, we actually have to specify push dash dash tags, and that will push it to a remote. Otherwise, the tags will just remain local. Now, if we go back over to GitHub and click the branch button, you're going to see that there is a tags tab. If we click that, we're going to see a list of the tags for our current repository. We can click one, and then we're brought to a page where we can see the state that our code was in when we tagged it. All right, we've reached the end of level five. It's time for you to push some remote branches and make some tags. <laughs>